So we're going to be discussing net force and sum of forces. So when I say net force, this is also known as the sum of the forces. A way that we're going to write this is going to be doing this Greek letter sigma and F. So this sigma This basically means to add everything. That's what this sigma is telling us. And the everything that we're going to add are forces. And we're going to do something that's going to upset Sir Isaac Newton um, because we're going to say that this is going to be Newton's second law, that this sum of the forces equals MA. And I'm going to say it upsets Newton. And once we get to the end of this course, then you'll see why it upsets him. But in general, we're going to say that this is Newton's second law. Wink, wink. But in uh, in all generality, this, this will work because if we have a force, all the forces acting on a mass will cause this mass to accelerate. So with this, we have a mass with a uh, changing velocity. And this is going to be where we're going to get this net force, sum of the forces. So we're going to add all the forces that act on a mass, and it changes its velocity. Or it doesn't. If all the forces added together equal to zero, well, that mass is not going to be zero. The acceleration would be zero. So then that velocity wouldn't change. It would just have a constant velocity. So the forces that we can have are different types of forces. So we're going to have some different types of forces as well. So some of the forces that we're going to work with are going to be 1 F sub G. So we, I like to have the force uh, name. Like this is just a force and then the sub letter here, that's the letter that we're going to use to indicate what the type of force is. So this force, F sub G, is the force due to gravity. So this is also known as the weight. This is also known as the weight of an object. So your weight depends on your mass and your gravitational field that you're in. If you're in a, a gravitational field that's really strong, then, that's, then you're going to have more weight. Like if you're on Saturn, your mass won't change but you're going to be in a really strong gravitational field. So this G, this is the gravitational field strength. And it changes depending on where you are, even on Earth. Where here in San Diego, uh, our gravitational field strength is weaker than the gravitational field strength that is reported for the entire Earth. 
So the entire Earth, we use this letter G, and we say the gravitational field for Earth is this 9.81 newtons per kilogram. Now this 9.81, this is really for Paris, France. It's saying that for every kilogram of mass, your force, your gravitational force increases by 9.81 newtons. Here in San Diego, it's actually like a 9.79. So it's really close to the 9.81, but it depends on where you are on Earth. It also depends on your elevation. The farther you are away from the center of the Earth, the weaker the gravitational pull is. Now, that's not to say that um, like you go to the top of Mount Everest and you go down to a four. No, we're talking you go down to like a 9.78. So it depends on where you are on the Earth, and that will give you your gravitational field strength. But in general, this 9.81, and if you're really talking generality, you could even say 10. 9.8 is roughly 10. But this 9.8 newtons per kilogram, this gravitational field strength, is also this acceleration due to gravity. So the acceleration due to gravity, well, things accelerate because there's a gravitational field. So if you have mass, you have a force, that's this Newton. So if you have mass in terms of kilograms, you have a force in terms of Newtons that causes your object to accelerate if you're in free fall. So the acceleration due to gravity, we have a value for that as well. So everything will accelerate here on Earth, 9.81 meters per second every second that's how much your velocity will increase just due to gravity. So if we got rid of any air resistance and I pushed you off the top of a tall building, your velocity after one second would be 9.81 meters per second. After two seconds, you're gonna, your velocity would then increase by another 9.81 meters per second. And your velocity would continue to increase, increase, and increase. Uh, but that's not exactly what happens on Earth because, well, we do have air, so there is air resistance. There's that air friction, and there's uh, another force that we're going to need to take into account. So all in all, for this force due to gravity, we get our weight, which equals to mg, which also is this force due to gravity. So... Oftentimes, uh, a misconception will come in when I say the weight is 20 newtons. And I say, well, what's the mass? And then people go, well, all right, it's 20. I mean, he weighs 20 newtons, so his mass is 20. But the mass depend, like, does not depend on the gravitational field, but the weight does. So your weight depends on the gravitational field. And here on Earth, this is all for Earth. If we go to a different planet, uh, the gravitational field and the acceleration due to gravity, they are different. But for Earth, we have this 9.81. So we're going to use this 9.81. We're going to use it and abuse it. So this is one, types, one of the types of forces. So we are going to have points where we're going to have an object. And I'm going to have here a surface. Let's call this the floor. And on the floor, I could put a box. And this box has mass. Now this box, if I have mass on this box and the floor here is on Earth, we know there's this gravitational pull down. So we know gravity, this force due to gravity acting on this box is pushing it down. But this box, it does not accelerate down. It does not go falling towards the center of the Earth, but rather it has a force that opposes it. So 
with respect to the surface, this box gets pushed at a 90 degree angle with respect to the surface. And this box is gonna have a force it's going to be perpendicular with this surface. And we're going to call this force a normal force. So we have now another force. And this is going to be F sub N. This F sub N is going to be called the normal force. And really what this is, is a nice way to think about it is it's a push from a surface with 90 degree uh, with a 90 degree angle between the two between uh, with a 90 degree angle between the force and the surface. So what I mean by that is with this first example, this normal force was 90 degrees with respect to the floor. Now, if I take the floor and I make this floor now an inclined plane, and I still make this now an inclined plane or a ramp. And I put a box on this ramp. Gravity is always gonna pull us down. So we know that this force of gravity is always gonna be going down. But now there's gonna be this other force, this normal force, that's gonna be 90 degrees with respect to the surface. So this normal force, F sub N, is gonna form 90 degrees with respect to the surface. We're gonna have another force as well. We're also gonna have the force due to friction. So this force due to friction this force due to friction F sub f is going to equal to mu times this normal force. And there's going to be two different ways to be thinking about this force due to friction. There's going to be a static friction and a kinetic friction. So static there's no motion a zero velocity, kinetic, there is motion. The absolute value of the velocity is greater than zero meters per second. So there is motion, the, it's moving if there's kinetic friction, there's no motion, zero velocity, if there's static friction. And so what I mean by that is there's these two different types of frictions to where it's harder to get a box on the floor. Um, it's harder to get it to start moving than a box that's already moving. So harder 
to get a box started moving than the box that already is moving. So this static friction is almost always a greater amount of friction than the kinetic friction. So the static is almost always greater than this kinetic. Now it's not that the normal force is any different, but rather it's that coefficient right here. So this mu, what this mu is, mu is the coefficient of friction. And what I mean by that is a number between zero and one. And if it's zero, that means there's zero friction. If it's one, that means it's all friction. So normally it's just between zero and one. It's not one and it's not zero. It's a coefficient here. And this coefficient is gonna tell us just how much friction there is. And uh, it tells us how rough or smooth a surface is. If you have a real rough surface, this is going to be closer to the one. If you have a real smooth surface, then this is going to be closer to the zero. And that's going to be telling us uh, just how much friction there is. So this force due to friction is this mu, and it's mu s times this normal force. If it's that static friction, that's where the box is not moving. And it's this force due to friction is mu k times that normal force if the box is moving. And so this mu is just going to be a number allowing a force to be a force. So our last type of force that we're going to talk about here today is F sub T. And that's going to be this force due to tension. Due to tension. This is a force that is from a cable, a wire, a string cord, a rope, uh, a chain, not two chains because that's trash, um, but anything where there's like this uh, a material that's giving a pull or whatnot and it's going to be with a cable wire, string, cord, rope, chain, anything along those lines that is pulling something. And this force to detention uh, will, will be able to be shown uh, with this F sub T. So now that we have some of these types of forces, Now that we have these types of forces, what we're going to get into is we're now going to discuss some free body diagrams
also known as force diagrams. So we're going to be building up force diagrams. And this is what we're going to be using to generate or create the equations for everything that we're going to be doing in this force unit. So you don't have to memorize any equation because we're going to figure out all the equations that we're going to be using. And this free body diagram, force diagrams, they're going to be leading us to this net force. And the way we do a free body diagram is you're going to draw in a box. And from this box, we generate a force acting on the center of a box. So say, for example, we just have, um, well, you sitting in bed. Because I imagine that's probably where a lot of you are. You're sitting either in bed or in a chair or wherever you are, maybe in a car, but this is what you're doing right now. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a free body diagram of you. And so the way we draw this is just a box. We don't try to draw out the person. We don't try to draw out uh, anything other than just the forces acting on this object, the object being you. So what we can always draw in for this arrow down, we're gonna draw in this force due to gravity. So you can always draw in this force due to gravity. And we know the equation for the force due to gravity. We know it's mg. So we know force due to gravity is mg. While you're sitting in your bed or you're sitting on, uh, in a chair or in a car, what we're gonna have is we're gonna have then a normal force because that's a force from that surface. So we know that this normal force is going up, this gravitational force is gonna be going down. And so with this, now we can get to something that we're going to be able to label. If I draw in these arrows with these marks right here, we're gonna call these marks equality marks. So if gravity is 10 down, that means this normal force up would also be 10 because the, the marks that we drew in here. Uh, and also if the gravitational force was 30 down, that means the normal force would be 30 up, they'd be equal. And with that, we can then get to the sum of the forces. So when we get to the sum of the forces, we're gonna get the sigma S, sigma F rather, so the sigma, F. So my Greek letter sigma, this means I'm going to add everything, add all the forces. I'm going to add all the forces here. First, I'm going to go in the x direction. So when I'm talking x and y direction, if I have the x and the y going this way is positive, going up is positive. Going down is negative. Going to the right is positive. Going to the left is negative. So some of the forces here in the X. So I'm gonna first take all the forces that are acting in this X direction going left and right. Well, there are none at this point. There are zero forces. The sum of the forces in the Y direction, that's where I'm gonna have this normal force up minus this gravitational force down, so normal force up minus this mg, because that is the gravitational force. This all equals to ma. And we know that by our drawing here that the normal force up equals this gravitational force down, so we know that this also equals to zero newtons. If we have this amount of force up equal to the amount of force down, what we have is balanced forces.
Now, when you're sitting in your chair or in your bed or in the car and you're just sitting there, your forces are balanced. Your acceleration is equal to zero. You're not speeding up, you're not slowing down. Your balanced forces say that you have no net force and no change in motion. So that's what we're getting here with these balanced forces. Now we could have a different scenario. Where instead of having you sitting in the in your bed or in your car, but rather, let's say I throw you out of a plane, and let's say like a minute later I toss you a parachute. So what happens then is as you're falling out the plane, you have this force to the gravity, mg. I'm just going to label it mg. You have this force to the gravity acting on you. And yeah, there will be a small little force up. There will be some force up, this force being air resistance. So but in general, you're accelerating down. And so I can write out then the sum of my forces in the x. Well, there's still none in the x direction. And the sum of my forces here in the y, I'm going to have this force of the air resistance. I just labeled it AR. So I'm going to have that up AR. And I'm going to add in this mg. The mg is going down, so it's a minus, so minus mg. And this all equals to ma. Now, I just threw you out of the plane, so it's a very small air resistance. You're accelerating downwards. You're accelerating towards the center of the Earth. So these are not balanced. This mg down is much bigger than this air resistance up. So this tells us that this acceleration here since this mg is much bigger than this air resistance, we know that this acceleration is a negative value. We know it's a negative value because you're accelerating downwards. And we got this from uh, our free body diagram. So this is where we're going to get now unbalanced forces. We have more force down than we do up. So we have now an unbalanced forces. With this acceleration, the magnitude of it. Oh, what do I want to say? Greater than zero? Is this way greater? I think that way. The magnitude of it is greater than zero. So with the magnitude of this acceleration being greater than zero, we have a change in the motion. And with there being a change in the motion, there is a net force. So we can see that here with our unbalanced forces. All right. So 
we just went through looking at different types of forces. We looked at some free body diagrams. And once again, if you don't fully know how to draw free body force diagrams, I have this video here. Uh, I went into that balanced and unbalanced forces where a change in motion, speeding up, slowing down, changing direction, then you're gonna have an unbalanced force. Unbalanced forces, that's where you have more force to one side than the other. If you have constant motion, same velocity, then you're gonna have balanced forces. So we are gonna be using that as a concept moving forward. So yeah, uh, what I wanna try to show us is now a way that we're gonna use it is I'm gonna take us now to our page 20. So page 20 in our packet, we're gonna follow some steps here. So when we get to this part here, uh, what we're gonna do for page 18, 19, and 20, we're gonna have to do four different things. So one, we're going to identify the system. So what I mean by identifying the system is for this problem here, we have a motionless cat on the rug. So identifying the system is I wanna identify anything that's gonna be dealt with this cat here. So the cat's on the rug, so I'm making sure I'm encapsulating the rug. I'm also making sure the cat is within this. So everything that is acting on the cat here, I've defined my system as everything inside those dotted lines. The second thing we're gonna do is this free body diagram. So everything here now, all the forces acting on this cat can be derived from what we read in this, in the reading section, as well as everything acting on this cat in the system. So the free body diagram, once again, we just make a box and the cat is now a box. I don't want us getting into trying to draw out the cat because then when we draw in that, it gets, um, it loses the symbolism for the force. So now what we're going to have is this force due to gravity acting on this cat, F sub G, but I wanna write it as M times G, mass times that gravitational field strength, mass times this 9.8, G is that 9.8, that acceleration due to gravity. Now this cat is not accelerating towards the center of the earth. The reason why it's not accelerating is because there is the floor there, this rug. And so this rug applies a force up and the force up is that normal force perpendicular to the surface that the cat is on. So we draw out a free body diagram. The third thing we're going to do is we are going to then draw in the equality marks if they are needed. So these equality marks. Here this cat is remaining motionless on a rug. So if it's motionless, it has constant uh, velocity. Constant velocity tells us that this should be balanced. So we're gonna draw in these equality marks to show that this is balanced. So these equality marks are with these arrows and these little markers inside the arrows. And that's showing that this normal force is equal to that gravitational force. If the cat has a weight of 10, the normal force is pushing up with 10. There's balance, there's the same amount up as there is down. So one, identify the system. Two, draw in the free body diagram. Three, draw in those equality marks. And number four, we're going to get to the sum of the forces.
in both the x and the y direction. So we need to get to the sum of the forces in both the x and the y direction. So here we can get to the sum of the forces in the x, sum of the forces in the x, there is nothing in the x, so this equals to zero newtons. We can get to the sum of the forces in the y, and the forces in the y, this is normal force up, minus this gravitational force, it's minus because it's going down. So our normal force up, minus mg down, and this all equals to ma. Now, because this is balanced and the normal force up equals to this gravitational force down, normal force equals to the gravitational force, that means the mass, that's the cat, is not accelerating. So we know that this force is equal to zero newtons. Force as units. of Newtons. So I've been writing this letter N, and that's the unit for force. So it's zero Newtons. So this, some of the forces in the Y give us zero Newtons. So I'm gonna demonstrate it again here for number two. So when we see this, we are going to draw a force diagram for this skater constant speed across frictionless ice. So that tells me with constant speed that there's balance. There's balanced forces here. So I'm going to do number one, where I'm going to identify my system. Identifying the system here, that is the skater on the ice. And then I'm going to get to my number two, where I'm going to draw in my free body diagram. Drawing in my free body diagram, I have the weight of the skater. The weight is m times g, the mass, times that 9.8. And the skater is on the ice. The ice is pushing back up on the skater. 90 degrees with respect to its surface, giving us this normal force. I know that this force down is equal to the force up. So then I'm able to get to the sum of the forces in the X. This is still zero Newtons. And the sum of the forces in the Y, this is my normal force minus Mg, which equals to Ma. This all equals to zero Newtons. Lastly, when I look at this force diagram, I'm gonna draw a force diagram for this softball player. She's gonna slide into second base or third base. But the system is going to be the girl, as well as the floor, the ground, and everything that she's interacting with. So the free body diagram for the softball player here Still going to be this mg, her weight, down. We're going to have this normal force up. It's perpendicular with the surface of the Earth. And there's also this force here that's causing her to slow down. So as she's going into this base here, she's moving from the left to the right, and she's stopping as soon as she gets to this base. So as soon as she stops, it's because there is a force going in the other direction. So she was moving to the right. So she had a force acting on her going to the left. This force is the force due to friction. So we have now a free body diagram. The third thing we need to do is draw in some equality marks. The equality marks, the normal force up is gonna to equal to this gravitational force down. It does not equal to this frictional force. We can then get to our last thing for the sum of the forces. So sum of the forces in the X, 
there is something in the x direction here, this force due to friction. This force due to friction A negative value. Negative because it's going to the left. If I drew it out as going to the right, then I would have to have the softball player running to the left and then have the force of friction acting on the softball player going to the right. But here this is going to the left, so I have a negative force of friction. So this equals to m times a. So this tells me that this acceleration is less than zero. So it's less than zero. It's a negative value. The acceleration is a negative value causing this softball player to slow down. She was moving to the right in the positive direction and then her velocity went from a positive velocity to a zero velocity and she slid into second base. The sum of the forces in the y direction. This is where we're going to have this normal force up minus this gravitational force down. This all equals to ma, which is now zero. She is not accelerating in the y direction. She is not jumping up into the air. She's not sliding into and down through the earth. She is balanced. So zero newtons in this y direction. As I take us here to our page 18, I want to give you some insight onto what it is that you're going to be expected here. Same thing, you want to identify the system. So on this page 18, you still want to identify the system. Page 18 and 19. Identifying the system. Check. Representing this system as a point of coordinate axis. So in other words, we're looking for this to be in terms of x and y components. So we're looking at how this changes in the x and the y. Just like the softball player, she is accelerating in the x direction and not in the y direction. So I'm going to break this down then where I'm going to draw my force vectors acting on this. So the force vectors I'm drawing in are my free body is the forces acting on my free body. So the force that's acting here is that force due to gravity, mg, and the force up is that normal force, f sub n. Once you get to that, then include those equality marks where needed, just like how we had been on page 20. And then Instead of doing the correct vectors for velocity and acceleration, what I want us to get here is the sum of the forces in the x and some of the forces in the y. So, the sum of the forces in the x direction for this object, there's nothing going in the x, so it's equal to zero newtons. We also have the sum of the forces in the y direction. That's where I'm gonna have my normal force minus my mg. This all equals to ma, which equals to zero newtons because it is balanced. So I have my system, my free body diagram, equality marks where they need my sum of the forces, which equals to ma, and I have it uh, completely labeled throughout. So that's what you're going to be getting to with pages 18 and 19.
what I want to try to also show us here today is these force examples and this balanced and unbalanced forces. So before I get into that force examples, I'm going to take us to this balanced and unbalanced forces and what is expected of us here. So when you get to this site, you're going to see that it loads up. And I want you to do from the master level, I want you to try to show that you're able to get a data way. So in this object here, we have a leftward moving object. So this is moving to the left. And each one of these arrows represents a force. So if I see that it's moving to the left, that means this object is going to the left. And now we have a force up and a force down. Well, from this, I'm gonna say it looks like it's gonna be going at a constant speed. And the reason for that is because it looks like this is balanced. So this object is moving to the left, but there's no other additional forces acting in this X direction. So I'm gonna say then that this is going at a constant speed and that these forces are balanced. And so as soon as you get a data way, that's what I want you to screenshot. And this is gonna be the thing that you're gonna turn in to get your credit. Now, beyond that, I want us to try to interpret what's going on here. So if something made a dot, uh, um, a dot object like this, uh, it lays a dot at the same amount of time. So we see that these dots are evenly spaced out. So it looks like it's going at a constant speed. Whenever anything's going at a constant speed, it's gonna be a balance. If it's going at a constant speed, we know there has to be this balance. If we also have a downward moving object, so we have, this is where we have to read what's going on here. So we have a downward moving object, so it's going down, but we have a bigger force up than there is down. That's gonna tell me that this object will be slowing down because it's moving fast going down, but then there's a force up causing its speed to decrease. So it's slowing down and it's slowing down because it's unbalanced. So once again, you show me a data way and that's how you're gonna to get to what we're having. If you get to something like this and we have this leftward moving object and you just say, well, it looks like it's going to the right and speeding up and it's unbalanced. And if you give me this oh drats, then that's gonna be you telling me that you don't know what's going on. So try to get a, um, a data way, and that's gonna be what you have for credit, but practice through this, that way you have an understanding of these uh, free body diagrams and um, the respective balanced and unbalanced forces. As we get to this force examples, I have a video below here that gets to these uh, force demos that we're gonna be dealing with. So the force demos is gonna be asking about, uh, if you're gonna see a textbook drop, a coffee filter in the air drop, and uh, a coffee filter then just on the book, and you're gonna see it drop. And so when you're saying about this motion, uh, did the motion change for the textbook? Yes. And if the motion changes, then there is a net force. The coffee filter in the air, you're gonna see, well, no, it doesn't look like it's motion changes. And so I'm gonna say that there's no net force. And so once you have that, uh, do the same thing for that air rocket and the same thing for the coffee filter that is on the book where you're asking yourself, did the motion change? What I mean by that is, did it speed up? So yes. It did speed up. And no, the coffee filter in the air went at a constant velocity. And so once you get to that, then we're gonna take this graph bank down below and we're going to drag these graphs to the corresponding location down here. So we were saying that this textbook did speed up. So I'm gonna take one of these graphs and I'm gonna move it to this location here. So that way now graph number four, I would say is for this textbook. 
And then the coffee filter in the air, it looked like it went at a constant velocity. So then I would take the one with a constant velocity and I would drag then that graph to there from the graph bank. And then do the same thing for graph one and graph three. And then I will have something I want you to try where I want you to try to put an egg between your pointer finger and your thumb and squeeze it as hard as you can. What I mean is hold the egg, just like how I'm holding it right here. Hold it this oblong way and squeeze it as hard as you can. Now squeeze it over a, uh, a skillet or, or like some, a frying pan or something like that. So in case you do do it wrong and you have it slightly off, off its axis, um, and you break it, uh, then, well, you, you, you're doing it wrong. Uh, then you don't waste the egg. But I'm telling you right now, if you hold it just like how I'm holding right there and you squeeze as hard as you can, you will not break that egg. Guarantee it, you will not break that egg. So then tell me what happens once you do it. Then get to this right here. Does every force cause something to change its motion? So hopefully you're able to recognize that Forces are needed to cause something to change its motion, but not all forces will actually cause something to change its motion. So that's gonna be one thing I want us to try to see when we're working on this, these force examples. So lastly, for these, for these types of forces, we have a PDF for our textbook. So here's the PDF for our textbook. And we also have downloadable instructions. So that way you can download this textbook to your Chromebook and then you don't need internet in order to access your textbook. You just have it downloaded. Uh, further, there's also this online link I have here to this types of forces. What I want you to do is read it and then give an audio response about what this section was about. So in other words, you're gonna have to talk it. So I don't want you to type it. I don't want you to do anything, but I want you to give me an audio summary. Tell me about the different, I don't like when I misspell things, but tell me about the different types of forces in this reading. So give examples. Don't just um, uh, start talking and not even give an example, but give examples. You can give examples of the text lists. You can also give examples from your own personal experiences. You live on earth, so you have experiences with forces. So this is gonna be in an audio summary. And so I wanna be able to hear you give me something that told me that you actually read it. Don't just give me just some 10 second response that just says forces is, is mass and acceleration and then it's down ones are going down. So give me like more than just that. So hopefully I, I covered everything here for us. I gave us a good start onto our page 20. Uh, hopefully I gave us some good help uh, looking at our force examples. Uh, tell Kenzie I said hi. I love Kenzie, she's a fantastic kid. Um, tell her she has to take physics. All right, so um, I wanna say thank you to all of you. Um, do I have any questions right now regarding what we, what we've worked with? Uh, I will be posting this video. So yeah, if you missed one part of the notes, uh, you'll be able to go back and follow this video here. I'll be posting our Zoom session. I won't do that every week, but um, I will be posting this one here uh, today.
All right, so do I have any other questions from, okay, yeah, what is the N in, oh, so the N in the F sub N minus MG, that N, that is saying the type of force. So that is the normal force. So that N, that just is uh, the way that we're labeling what type of force it is. So that MG, that could be labeled F sub G, but I'm gonna just continue to call it M times G so that way, it's going to help us later on when we try to figure out, well, what is the mass? If I tell you that the normal force is 20 newtons and it's balanced, then you can solve for the mass because if the normal force is 20 newtons, then M times G is also 20 newtons. And if G is about 10, that means the mass is about 2 kilograms. So um, the N is just for the normal. 